Okay, today we're going to be talking about time, but in particularly, we're going to be talking about calendars. Calendars, those fun charts that tell you what day it is, because that's an important fact. Okay. Oh, let me just let you know, since we need to know what day it is, today is Friday, May 15th, 2020, and the pages we're doing today are page 377 through page 380. Okay, calendars. So the calendar they use in your textbook is this one. It's April. It doesn't look exactly like this. The nice thing is that April 2020 is this month that you see right here. So it starts on a Wednesday, and then the last day of the month is Thursday. And speaking of the last day of the month, not every month has the same number of days. You probably learned that in first grade and kindergarten. So I made a nice little chart here for you that shows you that these four months have 30 days, these months have 31, and February either has 28 or 29. So on leap years, it has 29. And there's a cute little poem that I tried to tell you about last week, but Jack Hartman has a better poem for you. It's a little, he does it as a rap song. So that's going to be a video on the next slide. You can watch it if you want. We'll put it up on the playlist. Okay, go ahead. So here's April, and it starts on the 1st, ends on the Thursday. And here's the Jack Hartman little rap song about 30 days half September. So that's there for you if you'd like. But let's go ahead and learn what these things are. So we're on page 377, calendar lesson 5. A calendar shows days, weeks, and months in a year. Uh, we have the month of April right here, and then we're going to just answer some questions. If you want, you can shut off the video, answer the questions, and then check. It's up to you. If you want to do it, you can do that now. Here we go. Use the calendar to answer these questions. What day of the week is April 5th? So we found the 5th, and we noticed that it's the first day of the week, which is a Sunday. So I'm just going to put the abbreviation, which is S-U-N. What is the date of the first Monday? So we go to Monday up here, we go down, and the date is the 6th. So I'm going to say it's 4, 6, 2020. Okay, on what day of the week will the next month begin? Well, if April ends on a Thursday, then the next month is going to begin on a Friday. So I'm going to put the abbreviation once again. What is the date of the third Tuesday? So we find Tuesday, and we go 1, 2, 3, and that's the 21st. So I'm going to say 4, 21, 20, 20. Okay, how many months? Are in a year. I hope you guys learned that in kindergarten and first grade. The answer is 12. Just like there are 12 numbers on an analog clock. Just a coincidence, but it's kind of a nice fact to remember. Okay, math talk. Is two weeks longer than 15 days? Well, we know there are seven days in a week. We should know our doubles facts by now. So seven plus seven is 14. So we're going to say that 14 is less than 15. And I'm going to write the word days. So the answer to the question is no. And when they say, how do I know? Well, I know that 14 is less than 15. If you wanted to, you could say this. 2 times 7 equals 14 just to prove your point that the answer is no, that you don't have to. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Here we go. So these are just more questions about a calendar to help you remember things about a calendar. Circle the longer amount of time. Two weeks or 10 days? We just figured out two weeks was 14 days. So 10 days is obviously less. So they already circled it for us, great. Which one is longer? 30 hours or one day? Well, we talked about yesterday that in one day there's 24 hours. So obviously, 
30 hours is the longer amount because 24 is less than 30. Okay, one year or six months, there's 12 months in a year, so the longer time is one year. 45 weeks or one year, I believe there are 52 weeks in a year, okay? That one you just have to remember, 52. So if that's true, then 52 is bigger than 45, we know that. Now we're supposed to circle the shorter amount of time. Seven days is less than 10 days. We know that there are 24 hours in a day, two sets of 12, we talked about that yesterday. And so 15 hours is the shorter amount. Shorter time, two hours or 60 minutes? Well, we know six plus six is 12. So 60 plus 60 is 120. So those are the same, aren't they? No. This is shorter because that's only one hour. I almost messed that one up. Okay, one year or 57 weeks. Now, even though 57 is my favorite number, one year is less because we just talked about that it's 52. Okay, use the words in the box. Hours, days, weeks, months. Write the best estimate for the length of the activity. Swimming. Well, that would be months, wouldn't it? If you were going to spend months. No? No? Okay. Um, hours. Probably hours. I know many of you would like to spend a whole day in the swimming pool. And that might be fun, but it might not be practical. So, we'll just say hours. Camping trip. Mrs. Bachelor, you love camping, don't you? I would like to go camping more. I would think I would find, I mean, some people go along, but I say days probably would be. Days. I don't imagine. I think days do. is good. We, when they, if they said weeks. a week, that would be okay, but they said weeks. weeks and I don't weeks. think. So that would have to be two. Yeah. Two weeks of camping? No. Unless no. they had really nice showers. No. Or a beautiful campground. Hotel camping you could do for two Hotel weeks. Hotel camping. But not regular camping. That would, no. be, yeah, that would be days. Okay, we're going to go with days on that one. Okay, you guys might have different answers. We're not going to say yours are wrong, but anyway. Okay, so this is a repeat of the other videos. They're not new, but that's okay. Here's the next one. Okay, so we're going to talk about elapsed time again, but we're going to talk about elapsed time using a table, being able to read what's going on in this table here. So every Monday, Lisa helps out at an animal shelter. That's pretty nice of her. How long does it take her to walk the dogs? Circle what you need to find. What time does Lisa start walking the dogs? So she starts walking the dogs at four o'clock. And then how long does it take Lisa to walk the dogs? So what we did yesterday was we took our wonderful minute hand and our hour hand to just help us see it. And we're gonna put a dot on four. And then she ends at six o'clock. So we're gonna put a dot on six and then we're gonna make a loop or a half loop, what we called a little mountain yesterday to see the hours. And then we just count the loops or the bumps and there's two. So the answer is two hours to walk the dogs. Oh, those dogs got a pretty nice walk, two hours. Cool. Did we answer the question? Yes. Does our answer make sense? Now, if you had done this whole thing and you ended up with an answer of like 14 hours or something, then remember what we talked about in word problems, be logical. She's not gonna walk the dogs for 14 hours. So you must have made a mistake. Two hours is a reasonable amount of time to walk dogs. Okay, so this is another chart. Once again, if you'd like to shut off the video and try it on your own, that's up to you. Use the table and a clock to help you solve. So we have a clock right there. Dana leaves for the library at eight o'clock. She arrives on time to start work. How long does it take her to get there? Circle the information you need in the table. So she leaves her house at eight o'clock. That's not on the chart. 
Um, so I'm just gonna write that down. She probably has a long drive like I do. Dana's help time starts at nine o'clock. So I'm gonna put that there. Now on this one, because those hours are pretty close together, I don't even think I'm gonna do the loops and count them because I can just count them on my hand. I can say eight o'clock, nine o'clock. How long does it take? One hour. So it takes Dana one hour to get to the library. So now let's try another one. Use the table to solve. Um, by the way, you guys probably know this. I've been looking at your test and this part about using a table to answer questions is going to be on your test. There is one table, but you use that same table for three questions, just like we're doing here. It's one table, it's one, two, three questions. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, but for now, that's an important thing you need to know. Okay, how long does Philip help at the library? So we're gonna look at his start time. He starts at nine o'clock. So I'm gonna write nine o'clock here. Once again, I don't think that this is gonna be one where I need to count the bumps. What do you think, Ms. Bachelier? I don't think so. No. And so his end time is 10 o'clock. Okay, technically, when you are counting time, you put the start time at the bottom and you put the end time at the top because then you can subtract. And then the bigger numbers on top, the smaller numbers on the bottom. 10 take away nine is one. And my students, when I taught this in the upper grades, they'd go dot, dot, zero, zero. Well, that's not really true because the elapsed time is not one dot, dot, zero, zero. So what we learned was instead of carrying down those dots, you just write hour, HR. So the answer is one hour. Now we're gonna talk about Marco. Let's see. Marco returns books to shelves during his help time. How long does Marco return books to shelves? So I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna say Marco starts at 10 o'clock. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And then Marco ends at 12 o'clock. And then I'm just gonna subtract. And you can say that if you want, but two take away one, excuse me, zero is two. And so I'm gonna put HRS, but it's not 100, it's not 200. Just don't do the zeros, okay? If both of them are zero, just don't do the zeros. So the answer is two hours. Sorry, I changed it in the middle there, huh? But that was easy, right? I think so. Okay, so erase, erase, erase. You still have one more thing to do for your math lesson for today. Go ahead. So, go ahead. Okay, so the last part of our lesson for today is practicing IXL math. What I suggest that you do is continue doing the time because that's going to help you to get ready for the test. And I believe we only have one more lesson and then you take the test. So that would be beneficial for you. And then hit it one more time. Okay, so that's just our animated clock. These are three different methods for how to do elapsed time. This one's pretty cool. This one, I thought matched this little picture here, and it actually is kind of neat, and it's called Mountains, Hills, and Rocks. And they just have a way for you to chart it using different little pictures. And the mountains are hours, the hills are, uh, I think, you just have to watch it. It's pretty cool. And then this one is elapsed time using the Z method. The Z method actually looks very, very helpful. So for those of you who want something a little more challenging, you might wanna watch those videos and have mom or dad or someone figure out an elapsed time problem for you and see if you can do it and get it down to the minute. That would be wonderful. Okay, that's it. Have a wonderful math day.